Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are learning how manual transmissions work and I am here with Charles the humble mechanic dot com. Dot com is part of his name. Indeed. Thanks for having me over to the shop man. Yeah man thanks for coming. Weird rule of Charles is you have to wear a spectator uh, wristband if you are to be in his garage. But uh, you know I'll play by the rules. I don't mind. I think well, it's... you got to sign in and yeah, uh, sign the Sally. Waiver. Sally was uh, happy to check in this morning. So yeah. awesome. The waiver seemed extreme. Well, you know you got to dot your eyes and cross your T's. So. You're absolutely right. So hopefully we have a manual transmission in front of us. Hopefully we can actually explain how it works. That's the goal for today's video. Well, we already have it in front of us, so we're like we're doing 90%. Great. There. We're doing great. All right, so we're going to start off super basic and then work our way down to the details in this transmission. So the first question, what is a transmission? And a transmission is a link between your engine and eventually the wheels. So it comes from the engine. It comes to this shaft right here. This is the input of the transmission, the output from the engine. Then it goes to an output on the transmission. Then it is sent to a differential and then the differential sends it to your wheels. So the whole idea of a transmission is that it's transmitting power from the engine eventually to the wheels and you have different gear ratios within that transmission. I like when parts tell you what they do right in the name of them. It is very cool. Transmits. The transmission. Transmits. The transmission. All right, so you mentioned gears and we need to have these gears inside the transmission. Otherwise, we would really only be able to go so fast, right? So this is a four speed transmission as we're looking at it. It's actually a five speed gearbox. Fifth gear lives up on top and it's covered. You have to have a case on otherwise uh, none of this you can see. So we have it all apart for you only showing four gears. So the reason why we have gears is there a trade off between torque and speed. So for example, first gear, you get lots of wheel torque, but you don't have a very high top speed with first gear. Uh, on the other hand, sixth gear, fifth gear, whatever the top gear is for transmission, you can reach a high top speed, but you have a very low wheel torque. So for example, if your engine is turning at 6,000 RPM with a three to one gear ratio, the output speed is going to be 2,000 RPM. If we had that same engine rotating at 6,000 RPM, but a 0.5 to one gear ratio, so that would be an example of like a higher gear, we are turning at 12,000 RPM, much, much faster. 12,000 than... is faster than 2,000 for the output. Yeah, so you're trading off there. You can have high torque in that lower gear ratio with a low top speed, or if you're, for example, have that 0.5 to one and the output is rotating at 12,000, then you're obviously cooking down that road. You're at a very high speed, uh, but your wheel torque is unfortunately quite a bit lower. Okay, so we understand why higher gears reach higher speeds, but why do lower gears have higher wheel torque? And so this is our demonstration here. So let's say we're in first gear. This is coming from the engine. This is our input shaft in the transmission, and it's rotating this first gear right here. Three to one gear ratio, so the engine rotates three times. The output, this first gear, will rotate one time. And so our torque is going to be a force multiplied by a distance. So in this case, the force is supplied by the engine rotating right here. So there's going to be our force, this gear pushing this gear to rotate. And then the distance is the distance from that force to the center of that driven gear. So let's say we're in a different gear. Let's say now we're no longer connected to this gear. We are connected instead to our sixth gear, which has a 0.5 to one ratio. So we've got that same force that we had earlier being delivered to that sixth gear ratio, but the distance to the center of that gear is very short. So the torque that's getting sent to the wheels is actually smaller. All right, so now we're gonna get into the operation of a manual transmission, how it works. And that of course starts with the clutch. So we're going to reorient this transmission so that we can see kind of how this clutch operates, what happens when you push in that third pedal, that clutch pedal. And so we're gonna move this around so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Yep, first we'll take out the input shaft. This is what's splined to the engine. Then we'll remove the output shaft. And then we'll go ahead and turn the case up. We'll reinstall the input shaft because it actually makes a little bit more sense when you see the input shaft. So our engine is going to be basically right here. Next, we'll install the clutch fork. So this is what's actually moving when you're pressing the clutch pedal. Right. So show me uh, if, for example, you were to press the clutch pedal. When you press that clutch pedal in, you're actually pressing up against the clutch fork which moves the fork and the release bearing into the pressure plate. 
The next piece is going to be our pressure plate. Now, that release bearing is actually pressing on these fingers right here. It installs this way, and as you can see, someone was playing Johnny Race Car <laughs> and smoked the pressure plate. So that pressure plate, you're gonna be pressing in with that release bearing. That's gonna force these springs to move this disc right here, the steel disc back away from the clutch, which we will now have go in. So the clutch is gonna go on like that. And so by pressing on those springs, this detaches away from the clutch itself, which the clutch you can see is splined to that shaft. So your engine is going to be rotating that input shaft of the transmission and this pressure plate by pressing on that uh, release bearing he was showing is going to be whether or not this is sealed up against the flywheel or just rotating freely. Right, so if we were to continue building this outward, you would have your flywheel assembly and then your engine would be next in line. All right, so now that we know what happens when you press in and out on that clutch pedal, we wanna know what happens when you take that gear lever and put it into first gear. So that's what we're gonna show right here. Right, so we have our input shaft, again, from the engine and our output shaft, which will go out to the wheels. These gears are in constant mesh, which means they always all turn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the input shaft because it's gonna make it a little easier to see what's actually happening with gear engagement. Our first gear is down here at the bottom. <laughs> And then we have our synchro assembly and our synchro hub. When you move that shift lever into first gear, there's arms that actually hook in this little channel right here that will watch your fingers push that Ooh. gear. Now that's gonna lock the gear to the output shaft. So I can hold and we can rotate these other gears freely, but first gear essentially now is attached to that output shaft. Okay, so we've seen how it goes into first gear. Now we're gonna kind of review these gears overall and then we'll work through each of the different gears. Right, so we'll put our input shaft back in the transmission. And you can see here there's a very small drive gear with a very big driven gear on first gear. If we were to then shift into neutral and then into second gear, we're now locking second gear to our output shaft we have a slightly bigger drive gear and a slightly smaller driven gear. And so you can see that trend continue up. So you've got first gear here, second gear here, third gear here, and fourth gear here. On the input side, it consistently gets larger. On the output side, it consistently gets smaller, changing the ratio. Right, and if we had fifth gear, that would be bigger here and smaller here. And shifting into third and fourth basically works the same. It is on a different collar, so we would have third gear here and then fourth gear there. And so let's remove this and then show that this is locked in fourth. So there it's in fourth gear, and if I rotate this output shaft, you can see that fourth gear right here is forced to rotate. However, the rest of them can spin freely versus if we were to go down to third gear, now fourth gear, can rotate freely, third gear is locked in, and it's forced to be used. But Charles, what about reverse? All right, that's a great question, Jason. Of course, when we're in reverse, we need all these rotating pieces to rotate backwards. Now, of course, our engine isn't going to rotate backwards, so what we do is we introduce a third gear that lives on this idler shaft that'll allow it to rotate backwards. I'm gonna drop the input shaft back in and then go ahead and put that reverse gear in. So in our forward gears, power comes in from the input shaft and directly rotates the output shaft. Now with reverse, our power still comes in obviously from the input shaft, but it goes to another gear. So the power transfer is input shaft, reverse gear, a lot of times called a reverse idler, then to the output shaft and that allows that shaft to rotate backwards. There is a fork that'll lift this into place to engage reverse. You can always tell reverse gears because they're straight cut gears and forward gears are generally helical cut. For example, if our input shaft is rotating, you can see our output shaft is rotating one direction. If we engage reverse, it'll rotate back the other way. Okay, so now we're going to review the entire process. I am going to be the driver. Charles is going to be the transmission. So I hop in my little Volkswagen here. I press in the clutch, put it in first gear. We're in first gear. I start to release the clutch. We're driving along now. Brum, 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 brum. 
And now I shift, I get to the top of first, into second gear. There we are, bram, 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 going along, going along. Now, as I go from second to third, it hits neutral on the way. Hits neutral on the way, gets into third gear, get back on the gas, bram, 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 here we go. And then I put it back into fourth gear. Boom, now we're really flying. And the Volkswagen's running out of juice. Doesn't yeah. feel like it's got a whole lot more in it. Oh, fifth gear out of nowhere. Chunk, womp. Well, Charles, that was some excellent shifting on your part. I think that was a great review. That's quite loud. People have to listen to this. They do. Sorry Thank about that. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, for I having always me. appreciate being here. And the Spectator Band, that's a new touch, but I think it's kind of classy. Next time, pay extra for the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'll pay extra for the Wi-Fi next time. Uh, and if you haven't yet, you probably have before, but do it again. Go check out The Humble Mechanic. I'll put a little link for his channel. He's an awesome dude. He likes Volkswagens. I think this is out of Volkswagen, huh? Yep, Maybe? this is uh, out of my 98 GTI VR6 Turbo that is getting rebuilt to install that limited slip differential right there, which I'm super jazzed about. Sorry, super pumped about. So in order to replace a differential and a clutch, he took apart the transmission. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Glad we sorted that. Thank you all so much for watching. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Check out that dude's channel.